Hey, 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 it's Sarah Jane from Access Your True Nature, and I'm trying, I'm trying this, um, propped up in my ashtray, I'm, I'm driving to a networking event. In 500 meters, turn oh. left onto Ravonia okay. Road. And I don't know where I'm going, so I have got my Google going, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and use this time to, to just, uh, have a catch up with you, and um, if I get cut off, I will try and get back on later on, but um, I can't really believe that it's Thursday already, and we're kind of flying, aren't we, through February, at uh, a pace of knots, or what I like to call of as luminal space. There's so much rain here today. Turn left onto Ravonia Road. And, sorry about that. But yeah, there's been some interesting things coming up. And I just kind of want to use this time while I'm driving to check in with you. And, and share some of the insights that have sort of been coming up f for me. I won't be able to read your comments because I'm driving and I don't want to have an accident. But I will look at them later on. But just just a, a little check in with you, bit of medicine, and just knowing that sometimes listening to your body is the the best thing to do. And my in two point six kilometers, right. continue on Ravonia Road. All right, I'll do that. But yeah, um, I'd rather be in bed. But here we go. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I know I haven't really been doing my normal messages as much as I have at the moment because I've been busy writing a book and doing a lot of new things, um, channeling a lot of stuff coming through me, writing my book, being with my clients and really focusing on where they're upping their game and a new reality of how they're really wanting to grow their conscious businesses and just stay in their sweet spot and really focus on what they're doing so they can see the results of the work that they're doing and listen it takes hard work doesn't it to to build a, a conscious business and shift your state and do all the mindset work so that everything that follows um, on the back end actually works for you without it being difficult to um, lose your joy so what I have sort of been realizing is just as much effort actually goes into living in a place of victim and blame and shame and scarcity and lack and all the energy that it takes to look for blame and to be in that negative sort of energy space. It takes as much energy, doesn't it, to create and do what you want in your life and, and actually create great money and having wonderful relationships. It takes energy. So you're going to be extending energy no matter what. So, you know, I think it's important to get really clear on where is your energy going? And I know you already know this because your results are what you're committed to. So the reason why I also wanted to pop in around this was because several people have messaged me today um, and, and going a little crazy because they're going, oh, 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 you know, did, did they miss the cutoff to work with my high level program facet uh, and uh, the gifted life group and I have to say that um, there are two spots still available to work privately with me and if that's something that you want to do I highly encourage you to get on the line with me book a Skype session with me so that we can actually get into where we need to close the gap with you and also to create your own personal prescription for wealth and health and happiness. So do that soon, because um, they won't be open for much longer. And and look at, you know, why are you maybe not getting the results that you want? You know, I love that quote by Einstein that says that no problem can ever be solved from the same state in which you created it. So obviously your vibrational state or your frequency state or your internal state, if you're saying I'm not worthy and I'm not good at good enough, if you're not, if you're not just doing the surface stuff, um, transformational stuff nothing's going to change you know if you're still in the I am you know and that is hard so that is probably why 99% of people fail to get what they want you know that's why 98% of people stop after a few tries because it's all this internal crap um, pre 
three seven-year-olds, where your five-year-old's actually running your car. In 1.2 kilometers, um, turn left onto Bowling okay. Avenue. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Yeah, so, you know, it's just like, you have to start to change your internal story. Um, because you're operating subconsciously from that I can't place of your three-year-old. And there, you know, a big part of it too is there's there's no inter integration in 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 the work and in the tools that perhaps you're using and you need to integrate to create the results that you want and if you're if you're not putting all these operating systems together and if you don't know what what i'm talking about um it's the four levels of commitment that i always talk about in 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 my work and i'm not saying that it's simple but it you know it takes hard work it takes persistence it takes consistency you know showing up Getting out in the rain when you'd rather stay in bed. <laughs> um, going to network, talking, listening to people. And I think that's the important part is to align new operating systems and getting them all in check. So that's really what I cover in a lot of my programs and in my, my core foundational protocol facet, which is six months of private one-on-one -on -one coaching. Most people go on to do a year with me. And it's about you. It's about creating from your core desires and your wants and, and what you, what success looks like for you. Um, because resistance is going to show up and I think a, a, a big part of what we need Turn is, left onto Bowling Avenue. is uh, accountability so that you can get and have and be and do what you need to do to get your life working for you. And it's really about understanding what I call, you know, the, the, the four... In 900 meters, turn right okay, onto Whitcorpen Road. Because um, you came in here with your, you know, birthright. Your birthright was to thrive. You, you're here to succeed, to have amazing relationships, to have money and the resources to make a bigger impact in the world, bigger than you and your responsibilities and your family. And it really starts for me with the physical body. And I spoke about that yesterday. Um, you know, that knock-on effect of how you're feeling on the inside reflects on the outside. And remember, what you think is often what you become. So I do a lot of work on the body so that, you know, you have the physical strength and the stamina to, to get through and do what you need to do. And, and a mind that's clear, you know, that your brain isn't foggy. It's healthy because you're feeding it great, great uh, food, live food, and you're hydrating. And, and, and we set that up according to your personality and your traits and your patterns and and what you need because you know that it affects your business relationships and actually affects all relationships and your money flows and everything else because you need financial commitment you need the physical commitment you need the mental and the emotional in order for your financial stuff to work and it really is that simple when when you have somebody that can sort of guide you through these these steps that they all work at the same time um, to get you what you want and if, if, if you're ready to show up and play with the tools and experiment and go out in the world and see what works for you see what makes you happy and what doesn't make you happy um, ask me how that, that'll look so that you you really just get to work on your business rather than get stuck in your business and get get shut down in the overwhelm and the frustration of all the back end and all the, the fiddly bits and all the, all the, all the things that people think you, say that you need and that's part of my genius is the integration and how to put that together so for those of you that are maybe drawn to me and maybe you're knowing um, I put my focus of attention and energy in my private clients and in my group programs and this is a great solution if you are ready to understand these tools and implement, you know, this is what I use in my own life and, and in my masterminds and, and, and with my high level cl uh, clients, this is where the magic happens. This is where you start to manifest, manifest miracles and um, it's pretty phenomenal what, what some, of, some of the women inside that fierce medicine space are actually creating for themselves in a very, very short period of time. So. Just know I'll be bringing more resource, a lot more 
daily weekly accountabilities like this in Facebook lives and I'll probably be doing a webinar in a couple of weeks because you've been asking for it on how to create your own economy regardless of where you live in the world we've just got 45% income tax uh, being blasted at us here and I know a lot of people are feeling like they can't get going and there's a lot of objections going on as to why they cannot create a thriving business doing what you love um, being you and, and staying in alignment to that no matter what's going on outside of you so you know a big part of my work is high touch and if you're not telling me if you're not telling me and asking me what it is that you need um, I can't show up for you and you're going to go back into those old operating systems of lack of scarcity of not enoughness and you're just going to keep sh shutting yourself down quite frankly and getting frustrated about why you're not getting any traction and that life is a struggle and you know, I think the key the key is to really know how to integrate all of this information. Otherwise, it's just another dump. Um, and it will shut you down. And most of my community are very sensitive. They're highly functional, sensitive, empathic. Sensitive. There is a hazard ahead in 4.5 kilometers. Uh, You're still on the fastest route. All right. Thank you, Miss Google. Um, and there's a lot of stuff out there that, that quite frankly overwhelms and shuts me down because it's just too much information and this is the kind of time of the year where a lot of my friends in America are kind of feeling the, the, the buds of spring and, and they're all launching and they're all um, really hustling to, to get their programs out there and, and fill, fill them up and it can be, it just can be too much and I think sometimes that's why it's a good place to just kind of settle back into your heart and get aligned with your big watch and, and what it is that you stand for and just focus on that and, and kind of close close off all this outside noise um, that might be distracting you. I think I might be ram rambling a bit but thanks for staying with me wherever you are. But yeah, I mean maybe you've noticed that you kind of get into distraction and the comparing game and it, and it takes you a lot further away from what it is that you're really trying to create on your business, in your business, and everywhere around your business. And you can get everything you want from, from around there if you just start to create new neural pathways, um, new stories, and you have to strengthen from the body outward. You have to look after your health. You've got to feed your gut, lovely, healthy... Turn right live. onto Whitcorpen Road. Thank you. Uh, live plant-based fiber. Let me show you how awful the traffic is out there. I don't know if you can see that. But it's pretty gloomy and doomy out there. But, um, yeah, you know, when you have a healthy gut, when you have a really healthy, strong gut, you can trust your intuition. You can trust your gut knowing a lot better than you can if you're kind of a brain funk because you're sugared out and caffeined out and, and you can't think straight and then you're not sleeping properly and um, it's kind of like a slippery slope downwards. So the physical body is one of the big quadrants that we, we work on and um, and it's fun, you know, when you actually start to see your body change and, and start eating, eating well and drinking lots of, of water. And I covered this in the seven day belief challenge and the people within in that group already saw the results just by doing tiny little changes. Hi Nazarene, hi Victor. Um, yeah, so also, you know, looking after your, your sleep hygiene and dressing your body in, in beautiful natural fibers that actually support your body in breathing. Remember, it's your second lung is your skin. So you need your body to be able to breathe. You need to be breathing, good diaphragmatic breathing. Your body's your animal and it, it takes you amazing places. And you need to be able to look after that and be doing physical activity and and moving in your body, you know, sitting, they say, it's like the, the new smoking and it makes us stupid and we're sitting too much. So I, I really show my, my clients how to integrate all these four levels that actually will support you in creating your epic, freaking amazing, phenomenal life. But at the end of the day, you have to commit to showing up. And hi, Maria. Um, so you have to do this for yourself. And the results really do speak for themselves. When you uh, put in new operating systems that really raise your vibrational frequency, that align with that high vibration of gold and silver and precious jewels, and you know, love's a high vibration too. Um, and um, money loves fun people. Money loves people that are actually honoring and, and meeting, meeting halfway there. So that's really where I want to get you, to a place where you're empowered and you're lit up, oh crap. 
um, you know, you want to be unstoppable. It doesn't matter what, come on, person. Um, you have a foundation that's going to stay with you. And In 1.6 kilometers, oh, turn okay, right, right onto Maxwell Drive. Sorry, dudes, uh, for Miss Google keeps interrupting my train of thought. But, but, but yeah, um, I hope this is valuable to you. Like I said, I can't read the feed right now. Um, I don't want to have an accident and it is raining pretty hard and the traffic is crappy. And that's just what happens when you live in urban sprawl. But um, where was I? Um, what was I saying to you? Yeah, you know, the foundations, I think they're really important um, to look at your limiting beliefs or your unconscious commitments and start looking at what you what you want rather than what you don't want. And if you don't get, the, get yourself in that place of identifying what it is that's stopping you, you're just going to keep doing all the superficial crap and you can do whatever you want and nothing's really going to change. And, and I also get, you know, if you've if all you've ever seen in your life is struggle and lack and and maybe you you know had a health issues or maybe you've in one kilometer in family. turn right onto Maxwell Drive. All right, I'll do that. Right into Maxwell Drive. Yeah, you know if you if you when I get pretty mad when I hear people say, oh well you know just choose something else and what else is possible and and you know um, and make you feel bad for having those beliefs. And, and making the choices that you've made, you've made them because maybe that was all that you knew. You know, you can't choose something if you don't have have a, have an, a different possibility available to you. And and if you've grown up in, in money scarcity or you've grown up in a family where somebody's bipolar and you've always had to be treading on eggshells and, and, and watching, you know, always be 10 steps ahead because uh, you don't know when someone's going to explode or um, it didn't feel safe for you to show up. It's pretty hard to choose something else unless you have have a place that's safe um, for you to create your own safety and, and write a new story. Hello, Corleen. Um, how are you all doing? Hey, Robin. Good to see some of you guys here. Um, I hope I hope this is valuable. Sometimes I never know where these are going to go. Um, kind of just comes through me. So so yeah. So you know, it's just like. Go easy on yourself, tread gently. Um, the weather is such a great great way of actually also showing us sometimes we, we need to, to mm -hmm. take a rest. Sometimes we need to, to stay in a still space. And, and like I said, for me right now, I've really had to block out a lot of the external noise because it is very, very noisy um, out there at the moment. Um, with everybody saying, do this and do that and you need this and sh let me show you how to do that. And, and I think that's important sometimes is to just follow the cue of the weather and get under the covers and do some meditation or do some journaling and really just get back on track with your own North Star. Follow your own inner pilot light and you can't do that um, if you're exhausted and, and you're not uh, listening to your gut and you can't if it's if, with all the noise. So you know, sleep hygiene, like I said, is a really good thing that I'm practicing at the moment. I'm really focusing on getting more sleep. Um, hydrating, upping my ante with a natural diet and just allowing myself to kind of feel where I'm falling um, and wondering if you're doing that too. Hello Miss Lynn Beaumont, we need, I need to get, I, you were on my mind yesterday, uh, I've got a, the most amazing creator that I know you'll just love and I, we need to make a trip out to her shop. Um, some beautiful stuff there and I just thought oh your body would look great in that but anyway I digress so how can you choose something different if you don't know any different tread lightly on yourself be gentle speak to the part of and pieces of you that are running your life like I said from that pretty seven-year-old kid in you that is running because she's afraid because maybe she's never had a place of safety or she's never been um, in a place where she's felt safe enough to ask questions and and give her a different possibility. So now's the time that you really get to do that for your child parts and you get to be the secure adult that creates that space for growth and surround yourself with people that, that do support your growth because if you're not growing, you're dying and 98% of the people that I see are dying slowly in jobs that they hate and relationships that are abusive 
and they're feeling trapped and they don't know how to how to get out of it and if you're listening to this you know that there is a different way and you know that there that it's totally possible Let's turn right go. onto maxwell drive all right i'm going ma right onto maxwell drive people um so yeah you know i always say that surround yourself with people that's that really see you and, and can support you in your vision of what you want to create for your life and if you don't know how to do that in 450 ah. meters turn left onto oh. Wumi drive towards kialami kialami it's kialami isn't that funny yeah interesting point of view so remember too i say this all all the time you are deserving and you don't get what you deserve you get what you're committed to um and you have to be in alignment to be committed to experiencing different result in the life that you want so um you know how how can you change some of your commitments because one of the things that i've noticed lately is that there is so much happening right now and it's it's a really fascinating difficult exciting challenging emotional roller coaster time and everything that most of us um, saw as consistent or stable or the way that we're used to navigating the world seems to really being shaken up at the moment and mm, you know I think as a result of all of that upheaval which has sometimes been real and good and exciting and sometimes just been downright awful and scary um, but you know in the best way possible at the, when we come out the other side of that is I've been spending a lot of time as perhaps some of you have to look at how I can start looking at what life is trying to show me lately um, turn left onto would need drive towards Kialami so I'm going to just have to ask somebody. But yeah, so what I've been reflecting on lately is, you know, how I can actually give myself the time and the, and, and the space, you know, the quiet space to to look at some of the, the things that I've, that I've been putting out. And maybe if you're on my email list, you've been noticing that I've been sharing a lot of that. And, and I've been noticing how I've been carrying around a lot of old patterns, actually, and how they've been resurfacing again. Um, or patterns of behaving which are, are very common to a lot of us on this sort of idea that I need to be doing more um, you know that I need to to take better care of other people and that I need to make sure that people know how much I love them and how much I respect them and how much I see them and I care for them and you know, I, I wrote about this in a newsletter, I think the day before yesterday or a couple of days ago, about just how much I've realized, wow, <laughs> um, all of this expression. In 6.3 kilometers, turn left onto right. Kilami Boulevard. Yeah. Oh, this is so distracting, um, having her, but I'm sorry, I need her, guys, because I'm going to a place where I don't know, but just reflecting on, on where I haven't been perhaps loving myself as much and that it was coming from a place of fear and a desire to control some kind of outcome and as a result um, I certainly have been taking on the identity of the caretaker and I know many of my clients that I've worked with and the people that I talk to it's a very um, common pattern that has been playing out with so many of us and also another one that's been standing out for me lately is just noticing how that in order you know I think in some ways to really fully engage in the care and the connection with other people that um, there's been a pattern in myself where I've had a lot of empathetic um, perspective taking where I've kind of been going well what would it be like to be in this person's shoes and um, that person's shoes and you know where's this person coming from and why might they be struggling with what they're struggling with and why they're doing what they're doing and I know that's part of my work but it's just been a little bit high um, and although in certain respects it's been very productive and it's it, it increases a, a certain level of connection but I've also noticed that I've had 
a really hard time landing in my own personal experience. And for the longest time, I felt like my feelings were the perceptive taking of where everybody else was feeling things or taking things on and that I needed to be aware of what I could feel. You know, that that's really how I, I feel my way through the world. And um, sometimes it's pretty painful. Um, you know, and I think what it's been revealing to me is the ways in which we are actually operating from a culture of scarcity and a culture of control and a culture of fear. And so I've been noticing how these have been playing out within myself and and sharing that, you know, with, with all of you, sharing them that with my clients and really starting to look at, you know, where are we going? What's what's happening right now? Um, you know, it's, it's very unpredictable, but if we sort of look at the tiny baby microbes in, in the big macrocosm of everything, it's, it's interesting to get curious about what's happening to all of us right now and the patterns that are showing up and in the ways that, you know, maybe it is time to shift and maybe life itself is actually trying to cause us to shift. And so, as I've sort of got a little bit of distance from all of this, and I know many of you can relate, I've sort of become, or the whole awareness of my different patterns of behavior have become a lot more clearer to me. And I'm beginning to really be able to utilize less and less and less of the external to navigate my own way in the world and as a result of that I've started to notice how you know our whole cultural foundation <coughs> has, has taught us to come from a storyline in some fashion or another that we are we're not enough um, that we, we don't look the right way, we're maybe not intelligent enough, we're not financially successful enough, maybe we haven't gained enough experience, um, you know, maybe we're not driving the right car or we're not doing enough to help the animals or the people or to save the world and we're dysfunctional or we're somehow broken or human beings are so terrible and we're breaking everything and destroying everything and there's like 101 million iterations of all the ways in which we're not enough or maybe we're actually alone and when I was thinking about this again I started to to realize and I think the horses have done this so beautifully for me and animals and nature itself how oh you know um that we, we create through this innate need of belonging, belonging to a herd, belonging to a community. And all of these, in my experience, the connections and the communities that we have together and that we're trying to navigate in is filled with this sort of foundational perception that everybody that's joined in this community is sort of feeling like we're not enough as this human herd. And so it becomes this place and this mindset of scarcity and competition with each other. And then of course, we can only sustain this so long before we have to separate and isolate and you know, we have to hide in our bedrooms and close the door and when we're totally alone, then we can finally relax and fall apart. And I, I found this quite interesting because I was like, oh, you know, this relationship of how we're actually creating change always seems to begin with the relationship that we're having with ourselves and and how we're treating ourselves and so I've really been paying close attention to calling me um, and I'm sitting in traffic and there's a lot of distractions but yeah so um, you know I've been really looking at my wherever I am in any given moment and and my level of self-acceptance and what I found as a result of that and is that I'm beginning to form a, an entirely new 
type of community and it's it's happening within my herd of fierce medicine woman um, in facet it's happening with people that I'm meeting for the first time it's happening with the people that are showing up with my animal communication work and um, really starting to look at where it's starting to fractal out in ways that we can't even begin to imagine to form a community where instead of trying to live up to us some external ideal we're actually completely free and safe to be ourselves and I know some of you are in that tribe and I and I hope that you agree with me um, that it's been an incredible journey to actually look at where we're all going through our, our own stuff and just noticing how how that's actually come from a place that's very isolated and disconnected and really living up this foundation of fear that on some level we're not enough and to be in this in this space and time where everything is sort of shifting to just give ourselves that opportunity to shift the relationship that we're having with ourselves to quite literally start to create a new world and a new um, place and type of connection with our internal landscape um, so that's sort of what's been going on in my mind and I'm really curious to know what it is that you've been noticing as you've been going along advocating your way in a sea of uncertainty and new people like I'm sure I'm going to meet at this uh, networking event tonight if I ever get there um, <laughs> But I'm really curious to know how are things starting to shift for you in new and magical ways and maybe messy ways and how are you starting to create a sense of new safety for yourself that whatever you apply really works for you for as long as it works and know that that is perfectly fine, that that is enough. Because when we move beyond these needs for certain patterns and pathways that we're using and I think collectively we're moving beyond the patterns that we shape out of this foundation of fear and this fear of our own safety or the fear of not belonging or not not being able to sustain ourselves and our families and start looking at these patterns out of an awareness of love um, rather than a place of something that you need to do but from a place of the joy of what we're creating because um, that's that's where really where I'm starting to find a sort of new inner peace and, and compass direction so because let's face it you know we've reached a place where we really can't predict anything much anymore and and some people are still trying to force from a place of control to place to, to get their their sense of safety and where they fit in the world but for me I'm looking at it and, and from a place of wow you know this is empowering and deeply exciting because we've sort of reached a, a time in human history of what's happening in life in this moment where we can't really do a lot of planning ahead and life is is really asking us to just be present with just this moment just this moment that I'm sitting in the traffic in the rain present with each other present with ourselves and just ask in this moment you know what desire is arising around what you want to create and you know I find all this stuff that's happening and what's going on I certainly find it rather troubling and concerning and I'm also noticing that I watch my curiosity arise and I want to explore and I want to connect and then I can just be the witness, I can be the observer of how things can start to shift into a feeling of absolute calm into overwhelm in like seconds and you know I've, I'm really practicing with my own body and with the work that I do with animals and the horses. Um, to really connect with that feeling and 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 ask the question of you know what is what what am I aware of of what's happening in the world around me and and getting really more deeply connected with what emotional state do I want to be in and 
what do I want to be creating? And it, it always comes back to the universe that we have inside of ourselves. And I think it's a very interesting time. You know, I'm super excited with uh, my private clients that are really stepping into a different place and some of you that are, are ready to uh, step into the animal work that I'm about to start up again. <coughs> And my work with horses because horses just oh you know what it's just undeniable it's so visceral to experience being in a round pen and and look at how life mirrors back the feeling states so and the energy states that you're creating in your own world in that present moment and in your own sense of being and so it's it, it just brings up to me this is beautiful dance that we're in between, um, you know, and I'm not saying being in denial or burying your head in the sand about what's going on around you, having an awareness of that and engaging in it to the degree that it provokes your curiosity. And I think our interests and our desires to engage with, with what we're wanting to come home to, you know, returning to the heart, healing the separation sickness and returning home to not what's happening externally, but to what is it that you want to curate internally. And I think we're each cultivating a, a whole new relationship that, that externally is going to change how we create a new earth. And another thing that I love to support people in getting really clear with is that ever deep questioning of you know who who am I in this world and how am I showing up yeah you know, who am I really becoming and and I think that's a question that's ever evolving with you as you are shape-shifting into who you're here to be and I think that cultural message that you know that we're supposed to tick off all these very particular boxes and that we have to, you know, be good members of society and we have to be the most successful and be the most change that we possibly can in the world. And there's certain unspoken and spoken expectations, aren't there, that, that people have on us and what we have on ourselves of who we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to show up. And, you know, in the midst of that, for somebody to just turn around and say, well, you know, just be yourself, well, you know, you've been told your whole life that you're not allowed to be that yourself and you have to be this and you have to be that and and if I do then you don't accept me so how can I just be myself because that leads to rejection and isolation so coming into an environment of recognizing that we you know we haven't been given these foundations but it's not that hard to do and it happens when we start coming into a place of uh, engaged spaces of deep fertile listening places and connecting from a place of vulnerability and authenticity and being transparent in a very open and gentle exploration of of the tribe that wants what you want and is going where you want and, and what your actual needs are you know what causes you to shape shift and what are you yearn for what do you really desire for and where are all the pieces that you're supposed to be striving for um, and creating a, a genuine connection from that place in whatever you're feeling in the moment. So on that note, I am wondering if I'm kind of going in the wrong direction to get me where I'm wanting to go today and that perhaps I need to focus on just getting there um, because my Google ladies got a little quiet. But let me know if this was a contribution to Ramble share some of my insights with you today um, I'm willing to be surprised and there's a lot of energy going on as I said with um, the upping of personal tax to 45% which has got a lot of people that are creating their own way and creating their own econ economy coming back into that fear place of looking at well do I really want to up my game or do I really want to earn more money or have more resources if I have to give 45% of them away and 
So I'm going to probably pop in in the next couple of days and give you some insights and share with you what I learned tonight if I ever get there. Um, and um, where you are, stay warm, stay dry, and, and remember um, you get to create life on your own terms and, and, and you know more than you're giving yourself credit for. So allow yourself to go there, allow yourself to play the what if game that I spoke of yesterday. And remember, the world isn't waiting for somebody like you. The world's waiting for you and what only you have to give to the world. So if I can support you with that in any way, let me know. And um, just be amazing, because you are. And um, I will speak to you again really, really soon. Um, if I don't get driven off the road into Timbuktu. But um, that's it. Love you guys. Bye.